So in this next video, what I'd like to do is think about the other dimension of uncertainty propagation. So in the past two videos, we focused on analytical methods for propagating uncertainty into forecasts. I'd next like to switch to thinking about the numerical methods we use for propagating uncertainty into forecasts. So the key conceptual idea here is that one of the challenges we face in the analytical methods is, is called Jensen's inequality, the idea that if we put the mean of our inputs into a function, that that does not give the same prediction as the, the mean of the function evaluating over a full probability distribution. So you can't transform summary statistics through models to get the summary statistics of the predictions. But what you can do that doesn't violate any statistical principles is you can always take samples from distributions which then give you exact numbers and then transform those exact numbers into specific predictions. So if I have a distribution for a, a parameter, I can take a sample from that parameter distribution and I can run the model under that specific parameter value. Or I might have a specific distribution of possible initial conditions and I can sample from that distribution and run the model under that specific initial condition or I can run you know, under combinations of parameters and initial conditions and covariates and, and whatnot. So one of the things that we rely on a lot in a lot of the numerical techniques we use for calibrating models such as Bayesian MCMC approaches is this idea that we can approximate a probability distribution with samples from that distribution. And so for example, when we do our model calibration in a Bayesian sense, usually what we get is not a written down distribution for the parameters, but samples from that parameter distribution that we can then summarize as a histogram and then calculate means and variances and quantiles from. We're going to rely on that same principle when we do the propagation of uncertainty into the forecasts. If we have samples from our inputs and we can transform those samples, what we get out are samples of our prediction. So the key idea here is that we're going to represent the uncertainty in our forecast in terms of the samples of the predictions. One of the real strengths of this approach, which is known as Monte Carlo uncertainty propagation, it deals with all the nonlinearities in our models and all the interactions between different things in a way that is valid and, and justifiable and also one that is very robust. And the other real advantage is it's a fairly easy algorithm to implement. So we have an algorithm that can be implemented very easily. If we can just sample things and run models repeatedly, we can handle some fairly complicated uncertainty transformations while maintaining complex interactions and complex covariance structures. The other advantage is that what comes out of that uncertainty propagation can then seamlessly be fed into later analyses. So if I take uncertainties about my inputs and propagate them into an ecological forecast and get out this sample distribution uh, that someone downstream, such as a decision maker or a decision analyst, can feed that sample of ecological forecasts into a later, say, economic analysis or policy analysis where they propagate that uncertainty further. So to summarize the pros and cons of this Monte Carlo approach to uncertainty propagation. The, the major advantages is it gives us the full probability distribution. It captures all the covariances. It captures the complex structures and interactions among parameters and processes. The main disadvantage is that we may require thousands to tens of thousands of model runs to get a good approximation of our predictive probability distribution. So the computational costs for a full Monte Carlo error propagation can be prohibitive for more complex models or for when we're dealing with bigger data. That then brings me to my last approach to error propagation that I would like to talk about, which is if we want to rely on the Monte Carlo approach to propagate uncertainties, but we can't afford the full computational cost of running models of thousands of times, is there a way to approximate that with a smaller number of model runs? This approach to uncertainty propagation is usually referred to as an ensemble error propagation. So the main difference between an ensemble and a Monte Carlo method is just that ensembles usually deal with smaller numbers of runs. So they may be tens to hundreds of models runs, and they may, again, propagate over multiple sources of uncertainty, such as alternative model structures, alternative model inputs, alternative model parameters. When you're only sampling tens to maybe hundreds of inputs, and doing tens to hundreds of models runs, if you make a histogram of those predictions, the histogram them itself is not an adequate description 
of a probability distribution. So if I take, if I sample 10 random numbers from a normal distribution, you know, the histogram of those 10 numbers is not sufficient to calculate the quantities such as the confidence interval or specific quantiles that I might want. It doesn't really characterize that shape of that distribution well. But what I can do is to make a simplifying assumption, which would be, I may assume that those samples fit a specific named probability distribution. So for example, I may look at that histogram of predictions and say, I can't work with those samples directly to represent the distribution, but I, they appear to be approximately normal. So for example, if a predictive distribution looks approximately normal, you could use the sample mean and variance, so parameterize a normal distribution using the sam ensemble samples. Then when we do any further analysis, for example, calculating a confidence interval, we will do that using that assumed normal distribution. Uh, so to summarize, in ensemble methods, we're trying to reduce that computational cost of the Monte Carlo method by making additional assumptions. So the cost is additional assumptions about specific probability distributions that we're going to fit our ensemble to. Uh, the benefit is that we can get away with a smaller number of ensembles. So for example, you know, if I need to get a, a solid, stable estimate of a mean and a covariance, I may, be able, again, be able to get away with that with just tens to hundreds of ensemble members.